Rescuers announce one of two black boxes have been found following the tragic Boeing plane crash in China. Relatives and other loved ones also arrive on the scene. The U.S. deals another heavy blow to Chinese officials, this time targeting their ability to get through the border. A U.S. military admiral says China is arming man-made islands in the South China Sea. That says the U.S. and allies in the region pursue a different goal, a free and open Indo-Pacific. We examine China's oil imports and look at how its purchases from the U.S. are changing. And for those watching our full episode, did China send weapons to Russia? For the first time, the U.S. makes an official statement. And China is facing a severe COVID-19 outbreak, one of the worst since it first emerged in Wuhan. But how long will Beijing hold on to its strict zero cases policy? Welcome to China in Focus. I'm Tiffany Meyer. Before we start, a quick thank you to today's sponsor, Sinyan Performing Arts. Have you ever wondered what China was like before the Communist Party took over in 1949? This show depicts just that. Shenyun showcases China's rich cultural heritage and what the regime destroyed, which is why the performance is banned in China. Captivating and uplifting, Shenyun brings to life the legendary heroes of old, portraying the spirituality and deep wisdom present in ancient Chinese tradition. Get your tickets today at shenyun.show slash China in Focus. Enter the code CN in Focus with no spaces to waive ticket fees. Welcome to China in Focus. I'm Tiffany Meyer. It's day three of search efforts after a Boeing 737 went down in China. Rescue workers are now finding human remains among the wreckage, but with still no signs of life. The aircraft's black box has also been recovered, but the cause of the accident remains unknown. Here's more. Rescue efforts saw a breakthrough on Wednesday night. Emergency responders claimed they had found human tissue fragments among the aircraft parts. Desperate and grief-stricken relatives of the victims arrived at the crash site the same day. All I want is hope, the hope of survival. The government didn't say anything. I'm here to check it out. Police set up a checkpoint at a nearby village close to the site as the victim's loved ones streamed into the area. Do you think there's still hope of survival? I don't know. How did you feel the moment when you heard the news? It was like my heart just dropped. According to CNN, one of the passengers was a mother. She hadn't seen her daughter for years and had been making the trip to meet her. Another woman had been on her way to reunite with her fiancé after months apart. A Beijing-based media outlet reported that a young girl was also on board, flying back home to celebrate her 16th birthday. One man explains how he narrowly and unknowingly escaped boarding the now-crashed plane after changing his ticket to an earlier flight. But six of his relatives and friends, including his sister, weren't so lucky. They are among the missing victims. One of the two black boxes from the plane was found on Wednesday, though the cockpit voice recorder was severely damaged. Workers are still searching for the flight data recorder. The crash struck when the Boeing 737-800 jet plunged to the ground on Monday before landing in southern China's Guangzhou City. 132 Chinese citizens were on board. Publishing the interim reports normally takes around a month. Deeper investigations may take up to a year or even longer. The aircraft that went down is part of Boeing 737 family. China is Boeing's second largest market after the United States. China's foreign ministry is taking aim at a new round of U.S. sanctions. The ministry says the United States should immediately revoke visa curbs on Chinese officials. And if it doesn't, the U.S. should expect countermeasures. The warning appeared to target a statement from Secretary of State Antony Blinken on Monday. That's when the State Department announced a plan to restrict visas for Chinese officials involved in what it called repressive acts, both in policymaking and implementation. In the statement, Blinken says the U.S. rejects Chinese officials' efforts to, quote, harass, intimidate, surveil, and abduct members of ethnic and religious minority groups including those who seek safety abroad and U.S. citizens who speak out on behalf of these vulnerable populations.
He added that the U.S. is committed to defending human rights around the world using all diplomatic and economic measures. The statement also included a list of potential victims of that repression, including religious and spiritual practitioners, members of ethnic minority groups, dissidents, human rights defenders, journalists, labor organizers, civil society organizers, and peaceful protesters in China and beyond. A group of 40 Republicans from both the Senate and House are reaching out to President Biden. In a letter, they urged the president to include more defense spending in his proposal for the next fiscal budget. Biden is expected to announce his budget next week. The representatives proposed a 5 percent increase above inflation for defense spending and cited China and Russia as some of the main reasons behind it. During his first year in office, Biden submitted a budget that kept defense spending effectively flat. Next, an update on the Indo-Pacific. A top U.S. commander says China has fully militarized at least three of the man-made islands it built in the South China Sea. China claims the ocean territory as its own, though it remains disputed. But the commander says Beijing has already armed the small islands with anti-ship and anti-aircraft missile systems, laser and jamming equipment, and fighter jets. U.S. Indo-Pacific Commander Admiral John C. Aquilino talked about the issue over the weekend. He says China's aggression in the area has been happening for the past 20 years, describing it as the largest military buildup since World War II by China. He pointed out these actions come in stark contrast to Beijing's assurances that it would not transform the artificial islands into military bases. Commanding officer for the U.S. Navy Joel Martinez also gave his take. He said his crew monitors all daily changes happening in the South China Sea. He also stressed how important it is for the U.S. to work with the Philippine military in the area. An opportunity to work with the Philippine military is critical right now as we strengthen our ties, our relationships, as we both have a shared vision and a common goal for a free and open Indo-Pacific region. The Chinese Communist Party considers almost the entire South China Sea as part of its own territory, although an international court deemed that claim illegal. The other parties in the area, including the Philippines, Vietnam, Malaysia, Taiwan and Brunei, also claim part of the sea. Approximately $5 trillion in goods are shipped through the region every year. The United States has no claims in the area itself but has deployed Navy forces for decades to promote free navigation in international waterways. In times of trouble, what are the most valuable resources a country can have? The answers may vary. But two things always top the list, food and energy. Looking at the energy issue, the U.S. is exporting oil to China. As a net petroleum exporter, 7 percent of U.S. oil exports went to China last year. Only three countries bought more oil from the U.S. than China did, Mexico, Canada and India. Right now, China is the world's largest oil importer. The country has dramatically increased its oil imports over the past two decades. Back then, China's oil imports were at approximately the same level as other developing countries like India. But in 2017, China's imports surpassed U.S. levels, and Beijing became the world's leading importer. And that growth from 2015 to 2019 amounts to over 40 percent of the world's total. But that's not all. The pandemic boosted that import ramp up even more. Starting late 2019, China's crude oil imports saw significant growth totaling over 7 percent compared to the previous year. But last year's numbers saw a shakeup. 2021 was the first year in decades that China's oil imports actually declined. According to Chinese customs data released early January, imports dropped by almost 5.5 percent. What was behind the decline? China's official report cited China's consolidation of private refineries for the drop. The report also noted rising crude oil prices as the world is slowly stepping out of the pandemic shadow. But the Japanese media outlet Nikkei explains the drop differently. It says the lowered import figures reflect the decline in fuel demand amid the lockdown, coupled with slowed car sales due to low domestic demand. While China has become the world's largest crude oil importer, the title of world's largest oil consumer still goes to the U.S. 
The United States consumes nearly 20 million barrels a day. For comparison, China consumes just over 12 million barrels a day, ranking second after the U.S. Next, we'd like to zoom in on a special update requested by some of our viewers. They asked about the current situation Christians in China face. First, we'd like to distinguish that there are two kinds of churches inside China. One group covers the churches officially recognized by the Chinese state. Those organizations observe the leadership of the Chinese Communist Party, or CCP, and enjoy certain religious rights with restrictions. For instance, church members are allowed to participate in events held at church, but are not allowed to practice their faith elsewhere. The second group covers what are known as underground churches. They don't recognize the CCP's leadership and because of it have been persecuted for decades. Arrests and church building demolitions are also commonplace. Last month, a priest from an underground church was sentenced to eight years in jail. Her name is Hao Zhiwei from central China's Hubei province. She refused to recognize the Chinese regime's leadership and was arrested in 2019. Authorities accused her of what they called money fraud. Chinese authorities often use that charge to sue religious believers and dissidents for refusing to accept the communist narrative. Worth noting, the principles of communism promote state-sanctioned aestheticism in society. Another priest also received a recent sentence. Wang Yi is set to serve nine years behind bars after being detained in prison since 2019. Wang is from southwestern China's Chengdu city. Since authorities took interest in him, they've taken another approach aimed at his wife. They cut off his wife's contact with the outside world in an effort to coerce her to work with them. One member of Wang's church was able to escape to the U.S. Zhen Ting told a Chinese Christian Post that due to the CCP's propaganda, many people in China believe that Christianity is an evil cult. She called the CCP untrustworthy and said she believes that anyone who earns money inside China can be impacted by the CCP's reach. That's all for today's China in Focus on YouTube. We're now sharing a shortened version of our program on YouTube. That's after being demonetized for a year. Full episodes can be watched on our partner platform Epoch TV. To sign up for a 14-day free trial, please click the link down below. Thanks for watching China in Focus. I'm Tiffany Meyer, and see you tomorrow. Every once in a while, something comes along so masterful, it leaves you in awe. So inspiring, it changes your life. So beautiful, you wish it would never end. When that happens, it's something not to be missed. Shen Yun an all-new production every year. The performance was enchanting. I feel better about the world. I feel uplifted. It touches you. It really does. The expertise of the dancers was really, really strong. To know that it was live music was really fantastic. We didn't want to miss this. Make sure you see it. Have to come. Life-changing.